Hello, welcome to the Living the Life broadcast. I'm Stephen Fraser. And today and this week, I am teaching a series on having victory over sickness. You know, just a little while ago, I taught a series on victory over sin. Thank God Jesus came to give us victory over sin so we don't have to be dominated by temptation to sin. But also, as we continue in this world for any length of time, we will from time to time be tempted to be sick. Satan comes with many lying symptoms and worries to try to get us over into a place where we become oppressed in our minds and in our bodies. But all this week, you're going to learn, and you're learning about victory, the victory we have through Jesus Christ over sickness. But thank God we draw the line in the sand, and we believe, we just, you just got to take the violent, take it by force. That's how, that's how it works, you know. God has provided it, but we've got to take it. In fact, the word receive, where the Bible says, believe you receive, that word receive translates take. Take, believe you take it. And how do you take it? Violently. I mean, you're determined. That's the way it is. This is it. I've drawn the line in the, land, in the set. That settles it. And you know, that wipes out a lot of problems in life. I mean, that just knocks the devil right out when you draw the line in the sand and say, that's it. Put your foot down and drive him out in the name of Jesus without any doubt. See, we got to get the doubt out. You know, faith doesn't have any doubt. Remember, he says, believing in your heart without doubting. That's how we receive from God. We got to get that doubt out. And we got to be able to, you know, recognize and be honest with ourselves, recognize where we are. Know when we're, when we're, we're doubting. We're not over in faith. We haven't drawn that line in the sand and we're, that's it and come hell or high water, that's the way it is. You know, it, we got to be able to recognize when we're doubting. You say, well, what do you do when you're doubting? Well, you get over there in the Word of God, for one. Build your faith up and stir yourself up. Sometimes you just got to stir yourself up. Just fire yourself up, you know, just like a, an athlete before a, a big game. You know, before he goes out there and plays uh, or goes in the ring to fight. I mean, he stirs himself. That team will stir themselves up. They'll psych themselves up. And it's important. It's a big part of winning. Because we have an adversary that's determined to keep us out of the things that God has provided for us. And so, you know, we can't be passive. We can't go on the field of life passive. We've got to psych ourselves up, and then we've got to psych others up. Because we're all on the same team. And that's why the Bible says in Hebrews, I think Hebrews 3, it says that we're, we're to exhort one another daily. While it's cold today, let's say will be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Exhort one another daily. Encourage one another daily. Stir one another up. We're to stir one another up for good works. So, you know, we're on a battlefield. We got to get psyched up. We got to get pumped up. Push somebody next to you and say, get pumped. Get pumped. Don't just sit there like a frog on a log. Looking re- like you're ready to croak. God, God. Get, get ready. Get ready. Woo! Hallelujah. Hit yourself on the forehead. Say, I'm getting ready, ready, ready. Stir yourself up. Shake yourself. He said over in Isaiah, shake yourself. We got to learn to shake ourselves, stir ourselves up, fan ourselves into a flame. Because we got the goods. We got the greater one on the inside of us. We have everything we need for complete victory in every area of life. And so it's just a matter of stirring that gift up, stirring up that grace, stirring up that life of God, stirring up that faith. Not allowing the flesh and all the doubts of the flesh and the doubts of the world to come in and rob us of what God's got for us. Amen. We're to fight the good fight of faith. Faith has a fight about it. If it's not fighting, it's not faith. If it's still under the covers, sleeping, it's not faith. Faith is in the ring. Faith is looking the devil right in the eyes and saying, you want a piece of this? I dare you. Go ahead. Make my day. You're going to regret it. You come my way. That's got to be your attitude. You come near my house, devil, you're going to pay for it. 
You mess with me, you mess with my family, you're going to pay for it. And you've got to let them know that. And you've got scripture on it. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And you need to, I claim that promise. Oh, you messed with me. you trying to mess with me. That's it. Vengeance is mine. I'll repay Father. I thank you for taking care of that now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for fire coming out of heaven and consuming that imp. Some of you, we're waiting for a move of God. Friend, he's moving so fast, you're missing him. Everybody's waiting for a move of God. Read Genesis. He's, he's been moving from the beginning. The Spirit of God was hovering. Woo, he was shaking and moving over the face of the waters. He's just waiting for somebody to say, let there be. Let there be blessing. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be victory. He just wait for somebody to say something in faith so that he can move in your behalf. Manifest. He's already moving. Glory be to God. That's why if you don't keep up with him, you know. I mean, I didn't get to 1 John fast enough. We're already over here in Romans 6. So he's moving. I'm telling you right now. No sense of trying to go back here. I mean, just, woo, you got to do everything you can just to keep up with him. You don't have to try to get God to do nothing. You got you to keep up with him. A lot of folks aren't keeping up. But we're psyching ourselves up. So we can keep up. But you got to get fired up if you're going to keep up with the Holy Ghost because he's a moving. Notice this here in Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. Now, we talked about how when Jesus went to the cross, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, the Bible tells us. But it doesn't just tell us that over in 1 Peter 2, 24. It tells us in Matthew 8, 17 that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So the same body that bore our sins is the same body of Christ that bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. So Jesus redeemed us from sin. Thank God. He delivered us from the power of sin. And he has delivered us from sickness. On the same body, on the same tree, Jesus took care of sin and sickness. In fact, Jesus said over in Luke, the fifth chapter, there was a certain man who was crippled. And they had gotten him into where Jesus was. They had gotten him in on a stretcher, on a bed of sorts. And Jesus turned to the man when he saw the man's faith. He said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Let's look at that. Hold your place here, Romans 6. Let's just look at it in Luke, the fifth chapter. I want you to look at it because I don't want it to go over your head. Luke 5. He was teaching in a certain place. Verse 17 tells us the power of the Lord to heal was there. It was present. And then uh, here was this man, he was brought in, he had been paralyzed. Verse 20 says, so when he, Jesus, saw their faith, because it wasn't just the man's faith involved, it was also those that were helping to bring this man in to where Jesus was. It really, from a natural standpoint, looked like an impossible situation. It looked like it was impossible to get to Jesus because he was in a house, the house was surrounded with people, the house was full. They didn't have an invitation. And so, you know, it looked like, you know, they weren't going to get in. But thank God they didn't go by how it looked. But they went ahead and just pressed in and pushed in. And they got to the place where they were willing even to climb up on the roof, rip the tiling off the roof to get this man down in where Jesus was. Now, there's nothing passive about that. That's violent faith. It's violent And so they lowered this man down in the presence where Jesus interrupted everything. Because they just knew if they could get him in there, he would be healed. So the man didn't just have faith that was paralyzed. His friends that had brought him in there, ripped the tiling off the roof, they had faith. Thank God for faith friends. It's important the company you keep. 
This man would never have gotten healed if he was hanging out with a bunch of doubting Thomases. If he was hanging around with a bunch of doubters and complainers and they, all they wanted to talk about was politics and what the, uh, what the, the news was saying, and all they wanted to do was just look at things according to the flesh, this man would never have gotten in there. Even though he may have had faith, he still would have been on the outside. He still would have been on the outside of the blessing that God had awaiting him. But thank God he had friends of like faith. And you know, that's a big reason why God raises up a local church. Is so that we can be around those of like faith. We want to keep company with people that have the same faith as we do. And so again, we need to encourage one another in our faith. We need to be there to stir one another up and help one another to get into the place that God has for us. God has a place, not just for you, but your friend sitting next, your brother or sister that's sitting there in front of you, behind you, or next to you. He's got a place for them to get into, and we want them in their place. We want everybody in their place, because when people are in their place, we get blessed. We get help, amen? And we love one another, want to help one another. And so we want to encourage one another and get one another into the place that we need to get into. Can you say amen? And so these men, they all had faith. And verse 20 says, so when Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Notice that. Your sins are forgiven you. Here the man came for healing. He's in need of a healing. And Jesus sees his faith and says, according to your faith, your sins are forgiven you. His faith in Jesus entitled to him to forgiveness of all sin. But you say, well, the man didn't come for the forgiveness of sins. Well, notice, let's read on, verse 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk. In other words, what's Jesus saying here? He's saying, it's the same thing. It's one and the same. See, now today, the religious people wouldn't have a problem with you saying to somebody, your sins are forgiven you. Man, your sins are forgiven you. Religious people today would just say, yes, say about you. But if you turn to him and say, rise up, you were healed. Take up your bed and walk. Religious people just, oh man, they'll put the brakes on. Right there. And, oh, that's blasphemous. Nobody can heal but God. And he'll do it if he wants to, when he wants to. But the religious demons of that day, they had it the other way around. They were, they were, he's, they're ready to let Jesus heal him. In fact, one religious guy stood up on the Sabbath day and he, and, and he said, there are, seven, there are six days by which men can come and be healed. Come on one of those days and be healed. But don't come on the Sabbath day. He had, they had no problem with healing. Isn't that amazing? No problem with healing. They had a problem with the forgiveness of sins. That they had a problem with. Now today, the religious folks in Christendom, don't have a problem with the forgiveness of sins. They've got the problem with the healing. Same spirit. He's just twisted things around. You know, I guess that one got old, and so, you know, he, he, he uh, figured he'd put a twist on it, you know. You know, he pro you know the devil gets bored, probably. <laughs> you know, what has he got to do? I mean, how many murder flicks can you watch? I mean, it just gets boring after a while. Death, destruction, darkness. It's got to be a, just a depressing life for the devil. Don't you think it's a depressing life for the devil? So he probably just thought, let's turn this thing around. I'm bored. I'm bored. 
So he took his little religious puppets, and he said, let's turn it around. <laughs> but Jesus tells us right here, which is easier to say. And obviously he, you know, maybe one of the reasons why Jesus chose to say your sins are forgiven was just to play with the religious people a little bit. <laughs> you know, have some fun. Take it as an opportunity to teach them. But he said to them, notice that. Which is easier to say, verse 23. Your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who is paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Notice that. That you might know. That the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive. In other words, that you might know that this man is truly forgiven. Watch. That you might know this man is forgiven. Let me show you an outward demonstration of an inward reality. The man's forgiven. Watch, I'll show you. Rise, take up your bed and walk. See, he's right with God. He's healed. He's good. He's in good shape. Power of God's working in his life. God's touching him. God's flowing. The man's obviously forgiven. So if we know that we've been forgiven, then bless God, we know we can rise up and say, I'm healed. Because healing is really fruit, outward fruit, of something that God has done inwardly in our hearts. He's forgiven us. And the proof of that is in the healing. One of the proofs of forgiveness is that we're healed. So he says, well, I'm not healed. Does that mean I'm not forgiven? No. It, you could have received, you could have received, just like these religious people, they could receive maybe healing from Jesus. They couldn't receive forgiveness. Well, see, today, it's the same thing. We could, be, we could receive forgiveness, but have a tough time with healing. See, it doesn't mean God hasn't done it, but maybe we're just better at receiving one more than the other. But God wants us to be able to receive everything he has for us. He wants us to receive the forgiveness of sins and right along with it, receive healing. Don't let anything mess with you. I don't care if it's something as little as pink eye. I mean, I remember one time I had, uh, you know, a friend of mine <coughs> that I had led to the Lord and, you know, was just kind of ministering to and is a real frail, thin guy, and his name was Dan. And I was out in my apartment out in Oklahoma at the time, and Dan was over visiting. I was sitting at my desk, and he was sitting there talking to me. And Dan could get a little hyper once in a while. And, and so anyway, Dan was sitting there. We were talking, and all of a sudden, there was a knock at the door. And so he jumped and said, I'll get it. And he was just real kind of happy kind of guy and just jumped and said, I'll get it. And as he started to run out the door, I mean, I'd run out the door. And it turned that corner. I said, no, I knew it was going to happen. That end table was sitting right there outside that door, that sharp corner. I knew he was going to hit it. And I thought, ah, he went, boom, you heard it, pop. And he went, ah, oh, poof, thud. <laughs> and man, I just leaped out of my chair. I was very protective of him. I led him to the Lord, got him filled with the Holy Ghost, was helping him to stay on track with God. And I just really protected him. I just jumped out of my seat and just ran over there and put my two hands on his knees. And I said, Jesus was wounded for you. You were healed in Jesus' name. There'll be nobody. Jesus took your bruises. And I said maybe a few other things, and I was just violent about it. And I just took my hands off him, and he's sitting there on the floor going, and he's just, he's just lying there on the floor going, and I go, wow, I don't feel anything. <laughs> and he got up, he didn't have a bruise, he didn't have any pain, nothing. Thank God, we don't have to put up with Nothing. Not even a bruise. Jesus took, did you know he took your bruises? He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised. Bruised for your iniquities. He took my bruises. Thank God, hallelujah. We don't have to put up with it. He took our pains. We don't have to put up with it. I just believe we need to be good at just receiving, receiving from God what he has given to us. Just take it by force. Now, I sense when I said that just now, there was definitely some trouble with that. Some folks, some folks had trouble with that. You mean, not, not even, you're telling me no pain, you're telling me no, yeah. 
blasphemy. I don't know. That sounds like blasphemy to me. I don't know. <laughs> Why reason among yourselves? Why? Re- you sensed it. I mean, as soon as I said, I just sensed it in my spirit. And, and just like you, I can say, why reason among yourselves? He took it. Didn't the Bible say it? He took it. Praise God. I just don't believe Jesus walked around for a couple of days with a cramp. Or maybe he banged his knee on the, on the chariot, getting into it the other day. Bang, oh! And then for two days, he's walking around a big bruise. Oh, there goes Jesus. Do you believe that? He might have banged his knee, but bless God, I believe he just shook it off. Just shook it off. Maybe he never banged his knee. I mean, he did walk in perfect light. I mean, I've had to repent when I've banged my knee. You know, because I know it was probably because I was spastic. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we're the cause of things. And when you think you might be the cause of a problem, repent. Because which is easy to say, your sins are forgiven or be healed. And so you can just go ahead and repent. And there's been times I've stubbed my toe. And instead of just being mad at the, at the corner of the bed, as most people do, you stupid bed. <laughs> somebody, somebody bangs their elbow coming out of the room. And they start hitting the wall. Stupid wall. <laughs> Pride is something, isn't it? The wall didn't do anything. The wall's just standing there going, what? I didn't move. <laughs> I've been like this for, you know, the last 10 years. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> but we want to blame it on everything except moi. We need to learn to take responsibility for ourselves. And, and so, you know, a lot of times, you know, we'll bang our toes or everything else, And it's because we were just being spastic. We were just being in a rush. We weren't being smart. And so, you know, I believe Jesus, he walked in the light. He was the light and probably never did stub his toe. But anyway, that's a real big side journey. Bottom line is we receive right away. I mean, we're quick. We're not going to put up with taking anything Jesus already took for us. And we need to have an attitude about it. I said we need to have an attitude about it. And so notice forgiveness of sins and healing of sickness They go hand in hand, which is easier to say. Well, let's come back here to Romans, the sixth chapter now. So he says in verse 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Well, we know sin and sickness go hand in hand. So understanding that, we could easily, without doing any any injustice to the Scripture, we could say here in verse 12, Therefore do not let sickness reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its symptoms. See, we could say that. Wouldn't do any injustice to the Scriptures. You could apply because the same, the same rule applies for sickness as it does for sin. Jesus showed us that. So let's look at that again. Therefore, do not let sickness reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its symptoms. Symptoms can come, but we're not going to obey those symptoms. We're not going to obey those symptoms. We're not going to let it rain. See, it's up to us to not let sin or sickness rain in our bodies. God's given us that responsibility. He's given your body to you. And you're to keep it. You're to watch over it. Well, our faith is getting stronger and stronger as we get in the Word of God and we see how clearly God has redeemed us from sickness and disease and infirmity. You know, Jesus went to great lengths to see to it that you and I would no longer be oppressed by Satan through sickness and disease. And it's silly, it's wrong for us to sit back and just say, well, whatever happens, happens. God's will be done concerning our bodies being healthy and strong. It is, without a doubt, according to the Scriptures, for us to be healthy and strong in life. And the way that's going to happen is we have our faith built up in the Word of God concerning healing and deliverance from sickness. So to help you to build your faith up, I put together a uh, six-CD teaching series entitled Victory Over Sickness. 
And whether you're dealing with something in your body or not, you should get this series because uh, at some point in everyone's life, we are faced with the temptation to be sick. And so this will help strengthen you and help build up your spiritual immune system to be able to resist symptoms when they try to attack your body. And uh, I'm telling you, as you list this, it's going to bring balance into your life. It's going to remove a lot of the confusion that people have concerning divine health. And you'll find out for yourself how walking in divine health and receiving healing is easy. Even as it is God's will for all people everywhere to live a life free of sin and condemnation, it is also God's will for all to live life free of sickness and disease. In this series by Stephen Fraser, you will receive the kind of balanced teaching necessary to have victory over sickness. You will learn how healing is a part of redemption in Christ. What is God's will concerning doctors, medicine, and medical science? How to receive healing through simple faith? How to take charge of your body? How to cast off the works of darkness? And much, much more. To order this six CD series, go to our website at lofbc.org or call 888-542-2555. Learn how to never be sick another day in your life. Order Victory Over Sickness today. Ladies, it's time to register for the You Glow Girl Conference coming up October 24 through 26 at Life of Faith Bible Church. Experience the ministry of Jen Tringale. God is sending out, asking of you and I to step up, to step out of our comfort zones, and to step into the more. And conference host, Jean Fraser. Rise up, rise up. Deborah's arise. Deborah's arise. Deborah's arise. Let out your roar. That's what he's on the inside of you for. Enjoy a delicious luncheon fellowship with women of like faith. There will also be a special impartation service that is sure to transform your life. For more information and to register, go to genefraser.org or call 502-240-0016. The You Glow Girl Conference. Come and be transformed into the woman you were created to be. For a CD or DVD of today's message, write to us at Life of Faith Bible Church, 14200 Spiegel Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299. Or call 1-888-542-2555. You can also visit us online at lofbc.org.